Okay, this is the um, January 14th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Um, it's about six o'clock. Uh, we have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30. Our meeting is being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television. We're viewing by our residents and the public um, later on. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have minutes of January 14th. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Yeah, yeah they look fine. Yep. Of course, Lisa did an outstanding job with the minutes as usual. Unfortunately, Lisa is not feeling well tonight. We hope she gets better shortly. Um, but uh, as usual, very good job on the minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the January 7th meeting. Do I have a second? A, uh, second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, no warrants tonight. It's not a warrant week. Uh, next item on our agenda is meetings attended by select board members. Bill, do you have any since last week? Uh, we went last week to the small town, rural, rural, whatever. Small town summit. Small town summit on education funding. Um, which was thoroughly depressing from my experience. Just the need is so acute, the lack of the lack of sense of urgency is just depressing. Okay. Yeah, that that's um, that's kind of standard for that that kind of a meeting topic. Uh, doesn't look like anything's gonna to change too uh, too quickly here. Well they're waiting on the governor's Signature on the chapter 70 and if he's going to sign if he's, is he going to sign a millionaire's tax? Is he going to be the first Republican to sign a millionaire's tax in this country? Is the big million dollar question because that's what's funding going to fund the chapter 70 realignment We will see Okay, Bob you have so on Tuesday we had a conservation commission meeting where we had one item of business, which was the 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 Nexamp, uh, looking at the the Nexamp property and mm -hmm. and reviewing it with them, and and at our next meeting uh, a week two weeks from um, last Tuesday, we will be reviewing all of the documents, and and so I'm still you know learning all of the rules of the Conservation Commission, but we'll be looking at. You, you know, they, they do appear like they'll be cutting trees fairly close to wetlands and things like that, and whether it's in the buffer zone or not, and we'll be reviewing, you know, all of the work that they'll be doing in the area of the, uh, of the array. So it's interesting and, and good education for me. Great. Um, okay. And yes, Phil and I went to the small town summit, and what was a little different about this from the small town perspective was we didn't sit there and just talk about charter schools and and uh, transportation funding and all of the usual topics that are school topics. We spent most of the meeting talking about the uh, the the upcoming bill that will redesign Chapter 70 funding and uh, and, and and a little bit touching on Adam Hines's rural uh, rural aid uh, sparsity aid. And, and whether that's enough, and the fact that that's really not a solution, although it certainly is welcomed and, and you know, it, but it was mostly talking about the legislation, which was good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, on Friday, I, I went down to Natalie's uh, office hours, which she's going to periodically hold. She's holding them spread out all around the county, and she was in Shelburne Falls, and so I sort of wanted to just welcome her to up to our end of 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 the county and uh and along with phoebe walker and a bunch of other people who who you know are glad to see her there right and 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 i know you may have been there earlier but last night phil and i went to bruce juanette's spaghetti <coughs> supper and anybody that didn't go you missed a good wonderful spaghetti dinner <laughs> I, I meant i was meaning to go to that and unfortunately um, the the uh, uh I, we didn't make it. So for many of us, the Patriots game was also kind of in the way, uh, oh, and right. so so we went after the game was over, and that was fine. Okay. I will note that at the uh, at the small town summit, I did 
uh, reflect the town, uh, I did complain to Senator Hines' representative that they did put out a press release with the, for his rural school aid bill promising Conway money and promising Frontier money. And when the bill came out, there was no money for Conway and there was no money for Frontier. Uh, and I did register my uh, dissatisfaction with that, um, which apparently struck some people as uh, overly strong levels of dissatisfaction. <coughs> uh, but I tried not to be overly strong in that area. So. I see. <laughs> I see. Um, okay, I didn't attend any board meetings since last last uh, Monday's select board meeting. Uh, okay, public comments. I don't see any public here, so we don't have public comments. Old business we have to um, consider the draft marijuana host agreement policy. Okay, we talked briefly about this last week. And uh, I think at that point in time, we agreed in principle that um, an escrow was, um, was okay. We just didn't agree on, on an amount. Right. Yeah, since, since then, I, I've been thinking about this, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if, if we have people coming to us who want to actually start and run a business. Um, you know, you need, you need substantial funds to do that, okay? Um, and, I, and I don't know that the $5,000 that, that's in this initial draft is really that, that onerous. But we have other, if, other, if somebody else came to us to start a small store in town and to get to, you know, go before the planning board, we wouldn't expect them to put over $5,000 in an escrow account. I do think it's onerous. What's um, an amount that you would be comfortable with? Above zero? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere between one and less than five. But, you know, how's, maybe, maybe... How's, how's 25? Okay, I guess so. All right. Be, Motion to make that 25. What, what, um, what happens if, you know, someone goes through this application and... Um, before we even get to the point where they're submitting or, or doing a host agreement with us, they're over the 2500 Well, so what, what we do with other businesses, we expect them to pay for it. Um, as they go? As they go. And so we okay. could make it a escrow account and then do it as we go. And we, there, besides, besides the host agreement, there's also the community impact uh, fee that we can establish. Mm -hmm. So I figure we're protected on the back end in case of that. But so, that doesn't happen until it actually goes through. Right, but so. it's still, a, that would be, a, that would be a, the community impact that we, so I, I figured, it, I, I wanted to put something in here just to keep the tire kickers in a car salesman, uh, that's a car salesman tech. Uh, you that's, know, that, that's another reason for a higher number is to keep, you know, keep people from wasting our time with, uh, Hey, you know, I want to I want to do something here in town when they really don't have the means to really accomplish that. Yeah. We're not seeing that now. Hmm. Uh, you but, know, but and, and, and I'm, I, I was not impressed with the like the the, the uh, either the argument that this is too much for on its own sake or the argument that the three and a half percent was too much. Cause you're talking about plants, someone growing plants. Mm -hmm. So a thousand plants to grow. Plants to cover the three and a half percent tax is another thirty-five plants. It doesn't seem to be that onerous. I, I you know, I, assuming that because they, they, you know, the, the same thing with this. This is another fifty plants, but but uh, it did, it seems like I I, I can't really invent since this stuff. We're not going to be really presented with novel questions of law. Or novel questions of fact that might be for our lawyer for the first time to get, but I can't really see them chewing up five grand in legal fees. And I thought twenty five hundred was just more friendly. And that if they go over it, we can get out, get get after them with the draft with the community. So you want to be friendly? I like friendly. <laughs> yeah, friendly's good. <clears throat> All right. So right now we're looking at um, a twenty five hundred dollar number yeah so I'll second his motion 
Did he, you did you make a motion I did. for 2500? I did. Okay, and you seconded his yeah. motion? Yeah. Okay, all in favor? I'll say aye. Aye. Okay. All right, so everything else about this is okay except that number, correct? I, I think we agreed to everything. You know, there was some issue about, you know, how accurate the draft uh, plan had to be, but it's a draft. Yeah, I, I think this covers all the bases. I think yeah. the, the only the only thing we were, you know, in in a bit of a, a disagreement about was that was that right. escrow number. Yeah, I, yeah, none of the other towns are doing it at all except Buckland. As far as I can tell, Buckland is the only town that's charging money up front. So we're looking at well, their agreement, but no other town, at least as far as I in asking Tom. Uh, no other town's doing it. So. Well, you know, you, you have a situation where somebody comes to you and says, hey, we want to do this, this, and this, and um, they don't put any money up front, and it blows up, and you stuck with legal fees, and they're down the road somewhere. So, no, I, I understand why, why we want to do it. So I'm not yeah. opposed to it. Yeah, okay. All right. So, all right. So... We're, we're then in agreement that everything else is okay, and we've agreed on that uh, changing the 5,000 to 2,500. Great. All right. So I will, uh, I will make up a final copy of that for your signatures, and uh, sorry I didn't uh, have that for tonight. Well, you That's couldn't right. have. <laughs> That's all right. Great. Um, okay, next item is to consider Jack Remy um, as the subject of in memoriam in the annual report. Um, I think that we all knew, knew Jack yeah. and, and knew of his contributions uh, to the town as well as the community. Um, any considerations other than Jack for this situation? This, this was recommended by, uh, by uh, Jenny. By our town clerk. I would, I would uh, also suggest adding our town clerk to the to the tribute um, I mean 25 years of service and well, it's for someone who died. yeah but it's right oh is it yeah, yeah. well yeah it's, it's a okay. memorial <laughs> I was gonna make a joke I will oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's okay no, I, no. We, we'll find another way to uh, to honor uh, her and not put her in memorial <laughs> okay. yeah all right uh, motion <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, well, uh, your your little the, the blurbs of highlights when when he did the Boy Boyden Schoolhouse in co-op he was also president of the historical society for most of the time that he was president of the historical commission, so he actually worked with both organizations to get them to do the Boyden Schoolhouse. The way it read, it seemed like he dragged the other organization along with him, but he was actually president of both. So I don't know if that matters or not, but. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well, I'll make a motion that we, uh, uh, with the recommendation of our town clerk, uh, Virginia Melton, that we uh, uh, take her recommendation, approve her recommendation that Jack Remy um, be the subject of the in memoriam in the annual report. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Robert, how are you? Hi, how are you? Okay, next item is to appoint Peter Jeswold and Hank Horstman to the Highway Facility Committee. Do we have, who, who's recommended them to the committee? Uh, uh, the Thomas? chair of the committee is uh, recommending them, uh, Walter Goodrich. They both have uh, indicated their interest and willingness to serve. Two solid additions, Excellent. I'm impressed. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, Return to town to government of Peter Jesbel. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think Peter was, was uh, you know, once he left the Conservation Commission, I didn't think he was going to get involved in town anymore. But this is, this is good. Um, any other discussion on, on these two uh, recommendations? Okay, I'm making a, uh, a motion that... Uh, Based on the recommendation of the chairman of the Highway Facilities Committee, um, Walter Goodrich, that we appoint 
Peter Jeswald and Hank Horseman to the Garage Facility Committee for a term of? Uh, until uh, July, uh, June 31st. Until June 31st, June 30th. That's optimistically uh, thinking. Of this year, 2018, uh, 2019. Yeah. yeah, then we reappoint everybody. And they reappoint everybody. <coughs> Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Okay, planning board notification of site plan review for solar project. Uh, this is this is uh, on here uh, officially as an agenda item. We we had the uh, we had the mail last time. I just wanted to mention again that we have all of the documents for the proposed solar project on Main Poland Road at the town office. If anyone wants to come by and look at the site plans uh, or the uh, the document uh, that was submitted with them, uh, the the text document, um, anyone is willing and anyone is uh, uh, welcome to come and examine those documents. This is a large solar project, the first of its kind in Conway. Uh, everybody's trying to make sure we do it right, and uh, uh, so. Anyone who wants to dig into the site plan, come on down. Okay. And as Bob mentioned, the planning board uh, has has considered. Oh, <coughs> I'm sorry. The conservation, conservation commission has considered uh, the plan. Uh, and is that is that going before the planning board shortly, or has it been before the planning board? Oh, it's it. Yeah, it it is it is before them. Has been and will be uh, as the conservation uh, commission may. Um, okay. And Joe came to the Conservation Commission meeting just to hear the presentation again. Okay. Hear, hear what questions came up. Okay. All right, so that's an information item. Yeah, the planning board is, is more or less coordinating <coughs> the project, but the ConCom has its independent job to do as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, next item is the the employee handbook proposed revision regarding retiree language. Okay, Tom, you want to give us some background on that? Yeah, this is, uh, we just approved the, uh, the uh, handbook and uh, we, we, we got a late um, tightening of the uh, retirees insurance section. There, there's some redundancies in the top, in the, uh, in the current version. It, it's not quite as uh, um, as tight as it might be. Uh, we did add um, the the dental earlier with retirees paying 100% of the dental premium. Um, it was actually not in the proposed revision we got, which was based on an earlier version. So I put it back. So this is the revised revision that accounts for everything now and uh, cites um, more sections of the mass general laws than the than the top one did and again uh, gets rid of uh, some redundancies in the wording it, it didn't look like the intention of so, it was any so there no, was any change yeah the, there's no change it's yeah. just a tightening with some additional yeah. uh, citations clarification of language basically yeah right. and, and so what i would do is i would uh, put this out as a as a memo that the, the handbook has been revised when we hand out the, uh, the final handbook to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be incorporated into the... We, we plan to, uh, with the, the personnel committee, to review the handbook annually. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, have it on a more regular um, schedule of updates. So, right. smaller updates more often. So, this will go on for... This will be included in, in next year's version, rather than printing them all out again. Mm -hmm. um, could, could, I, could I ask what, when you're doing this sort of thing, um, when you're deleting something or propose to delete something, could there be a line through it? And when you're proposing to add something, could that be yeah. whatever? Because this yeah, was this I, was I hard to figure. Past. This was hard to figure out going yeah. sentence by sentence paragraph to see what the change was and the difference was, and I got kind of lost towards the mm -hmm. end. And the the other thing is that just citing those statutes. I don't know how, how at the end. I don't know how helpful that is without kind of explain because we're we're assuming that whoever is over administering the benefits on our behalf is going to memorize exactly what every clause is 
by, by, the, by the reference to the paragraph, and we're assuming that the person with the policy is going to... So if we could just explain what those statutes are, or even the title of the statute, um, just some reference to what it is that we're actually in meaning by that last sentence, because that, yeah, I mean, you, you need a law book and a law dictionary to interpret that last sentence right now. That's true. Uh, yeah, um, I can do that. If, if you would approve this now, then okay. I can add that as a memo to the memo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions on this? No. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the change in language from the current version um, of retirees insurance to the proposed version of retirees health and life insurance as presented by, uh, by our town administrator uh, with those um, changes to be added as Phil has uh, suggested. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, next item is Chapter 61B, Right of First Refusal, John L. Harris, Map uh, 407, Lot 2, Shelburne Falls Road. Okay, um, has everybody had a chance to look this over? Okay. Uh, does anybody see um, an interest that the town may want in this property? I think I know the property. Uh, I, I mean, I've never walked the property, but um, no, I'm thrilled that it's going to get sold and it's been for sale for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't imagine the town would make good use of it. Uh, I, I totally agree. Phil? Well, it looks like it's a nice, it's a nice little piece of property. You know where it is? Right? Yeah, it's just a hayfield. No, 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 no rocky, no. hilly. You, no, no, this is this is that. the split of uh, Shelburne Forest right. Road and Bartswell Ferry Road up on the left, and the topography is like this. Oh, yeah. Between the Farm and Ferry and Newhall Road, the yeah. opposite side of the street. It's across from Nelson. And there's two brooks that go through the middle of it, too. And there's an Strange. agricultural uh, exclusion on it? Is that what the 60? Well, it's, it's the 61B is the basically keep it as forest land. It's heavily forested now, and it would keep it, you know, it, it, it keeps it, 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 it encourages people to do like logging and have it reviewed and, and have, have a logging plan and things like that. So why would somebody spend $200,000 on 30 acres of Rocky Lily? It's not, not for us to say. That's a deal. 30 acres in Conway for $200,000? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, not if you can't put it. You can't put out, you can't do it. You can probably put a house on it. Somewhere it would be work, but you, but it's last. It, you would not be growing hay. All right. All we're deciding is whether the and 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 this this is we're still in the middle of the process. Um, as as you see from the uh, the policy document that I handed out, there's a complex process of consultation that goes on during the decision that the town might not have a compelling interest to buy the property. So, since I've been here, there's been no instance in which the town had a compelling interest to get involved in the right of first refusal. But we do have the process to check in with all the relevant committees uh, that might be involved in chapter interests. So, they're all out there and they have 30 days to respond. So, um, again, if the, if the select board has any questions, uh, you know, we can cover them um, at later meetings. Yeah, all, all you need from us tonight is to basically say that we're, we're not going to exercise our right of first refusal. Well, the select board has no, no interest in it. And then the Open Space Committee weighs in, and the AGCOM and the CONCOM. And we uh, eventually sign a document to that effect. Okay. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that... Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. We don't, we don't need to. No, no, okay. this, this is just uh, information. Advisory right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have four minutes before our joint meeting with the finance committee. Um, let's skip down to items not anticipated. Do you uh, have any items not anticipated? I do not. Do you have a short update for us, Thomas? Yes, I do. 
Uh, for committee news, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee will be meeting Wednesday night to begin considering the capital requests. I have let the chair know my proposed budget approaches for the Capital Stabilization Fund and the current round of requests. And uh, I'll be going over those uh, in some detail after we hear the, uh, the departments. Um, the Highway Facility <coughs> Committee is meeting Wednesday night with Andrea Woods of the FERCOT to go over possible approaches to funding, including the possibility of building the two buildings as two separate projects. Whoa. Something I know that uh, some people have been very interested in the possibility of. So what, what will it take to do that? Uh, will be one of the items. What time is that discussion. meeting? I'm sorry? What time is that meeting? That's at 6. Is this Wednesday, day after tomorrow? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for budget and town meeting, uh, I'm considering starting a special <coughs> revenue fund for audits as the current practice of biannual audits means a difference of between fifteen and $20,000 each year a fund that receives a steady $12,000 per year would be able to pay for such audits without changing people's taxes year to year. That, that would be a mechanism to smooth out the, uh, any changes in taxes. So it would uh, cost us a little and, more. And then, but yeah. Well, just to, to start just off to make sure that we have enough to, to do what we need to do. Um, and we, we could do that this year, but uh, more on that later. Uh, I've adjusted the highway figure for winter roads, wages, and salaries, um, and, and I actually had to do it with some other departments too, but you haven't heard from them yet. Uh, the figures we were using did not include the 2.5% general pay raise from last year. We were using the, the uh, requested amount rather than the approved amount. Uh, that raises the line item from 18874 to 19346 19, or four hundred and seventy two dollars uh, I've still not gotten I cannot say I have still not gotten several town budgets I got all my town budgets now and I am making progress on the budget document uh, we're in a strong financial position but I want to move forward smoothly and not spend all our free cash um, I believe it is still possible to have all of the money articles in the body of the warrant, that is, aside from Article 2, the omnibus budget article, be funded from sources other than raising and appropriating money, whether free cash, capital stabilization, or other sources. Um, that's that's uh, really good news. Very good news. Um, in other news, I have applied for a community compact best practice for the Kodakog FERCOG's accounting programs idea for a training program. We went over that last time and the select board agreed that would be a good project. And at least three of the four frontier towns are interested in the community compact efficiency and regionalization grant proposal to see what the scope and structure of a regional human services function would look like. The superintendent is also considering it, uh, though I will say he has some skepticism for regional projects. Um, he, did, he did indicate to me that he would love human resources first and foremost. And well, that, yeah, so the first step is to figure out what that would look like. Mm -hmm. So I plan to move forward on that as well. And that's my report. Thank you, Tom. Questions? Any questions for Tom? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's 6.30. We're ready for our joint meeting with the Finance Committee. Are you expecting anybody else to come? Well, Tom should be here. Okay. Do you want to wait a couple of minutes? Sure. Okay. Uh, do we have any select board comments? Comments by the select board? No comments by the select board. It's, it, it, it had, we, we set the, the dollar amount and then and then, so, and so he's asking about the the, the front, frontier superintendent sent out to all town committees, yes. and so maybe this would be a good time to just mention that that has taken place. And, um, yeah, the um, the uh, frontier uh, and 
a host of volunteers have been working for 18 months yeah. mm. on a capital plan and a proposal for borrowing. And that's been looked at very carefully and adjusted. And we have gotten figures for what that would look like. Um, I have included those figures in the uh, in my draft budget, and um, I'm happy to give them out. Do I have them here? And yeah, just for the finances committee's uh, interest, when you came to the meeting initially, the dollar figures being talked about then, it's now less than half of that. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so this comes under other town meeting and budget business, but I won't go too deeply into that because I have a longer presentation for that. So yeah, instead of 60000 per year to Conway, it's 30000 30, okay. um, oh, Yeah, and uh, just, just so you know, I have um, some additional financial information um, after we hear from the departments. And if we're still going to wait another minute, I'll actually uh, I'll actually copy that off for the finance committee. If I know. Just take a couple. All right. Well, Tom's doing that. We'll go on to mail. Okay. Tom got a uh, an email from um, Senator Markey concerning the um, um, Peg Access funding. Essentially, uh, the Federal Communications Commission is currently considering a proposal to alter at cable operators discretion the terms of the agreements between local governments and cable operators. The proposal puts at risk critical funding for PEG stations as well as broadband connections to schools and other public buildings. That is why I sent a letter to the FCC chairman, uh, H. Ed Pai, uh, expressing my concern for this proposal uh, that would jeopardize community television and urging the Commission to consider the proposal's potential impact on PEG stations. I was pleased that 10 other Senators joined my call to protect community television. Uh, he goes on to give us some uh, information about the PEG channels throughout the country and the importance of those channels. So um, there is some resistance to what the FCC wants to do, uh, and hopefully um, that funding stays in place so that we're able to, to have our PEG funding and to bring our residents the uh, great videos that are done by Frontier Community Access Television and guys like, like Dan. So for people who are following at home, uh, you may remember when Chris Collins came in and we had a discussion in our board meeting about, about this issue. And it's basically that uh, Comcast would be allowed to deduct the cost of, of our having a channel on their network. So there's lots of little things that they could deduct. And all of that money today is what funds FCAT. And you know, without if if this goes through, it would mean we could not have a, a public access television station <coughs> like we do today. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it may be. I, you know, I, I don't see Comcast as that desperate for a small increase. And and personally, I think FCAT serves a great service, and that Comcast ought to be thankful that that towns like ours put together a little television station and then provide frontier football games and, and our wonderful select board meetings and all those things up on their station. And, and if, if the funding that currently goes to fund F, FCAT was to go and be given back to Comcast, it, uh, I think it would not be in their interest. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, okay, we also got a letter from Senator Hines. Uh, he has said, uh, I'm very pleased to share with you a resource my office has prepared in consultation with the Massachusetts Department of Revenue to highlight the senior circuit breaker tax credit to eligible residents of the 52 Western Massachusetts communities that comprise my Berkshire, Hampshire, Franklin, and Hamden um, Senate District. 
The circuit breaker uh, is a tax credit for eligible senior citizens of up to $1,100 on their municipal property taxes, uh, seniors age 65 and older, by December 31st, um, 2018, who own or rent uh, in Massachusetts as their principal residence may qualify. Uh, and he goes on to say that uh, uh, the credit is applied uh, to what is owed uh, for income tax to apply seniors simply need to file a Massachusetts state income tax return and include Schedule CB, the circuit breaker credit form. The tax credit isn't considered income, so it's not, it does not affect the status of eligibility in means tested programs. So that's, uh, that's good news for our seniors. Can we do anything to publicize that? Um, Tom, we can, can we put this on, yeah. on the website? So, question, so that's a tax credit against state income tax? Uh, it's, a, it's a tax credit um, uh, applied to what is owed for income tax, yes. Okay, so, so it has to be mass data. So it's not gonna impact our collection? Our revenue? No. No, no not at all. Okay. Not at all. We'll impact them in Boston. So, uh, and they can uh, give us less for schools. Right. <laughs> we, we also received a follow up letter from attorney Tom Lesser, who was in to see us on December 26th, uh, talking about uh, host uh, community agreements and policies for accepting applications for cannabis-related uh, establishments. Uh, and he just gives us some information in the letter and included the guidance on host community agreements from the Cannabis Control Commission, which I'm, I'm sure Tom already, already had. But that's, that's good. All right. Okay, Tom, you're here. So now we can start with our joint, our joint meeting. <laughs> Don't see my guy was holding me up. We got plenty to Well, we were, I just wanted to make you sure. You can always find something to do. <laughs> All right, so um, now we'll, uh, we'll go to the joint uh, meeting with the Finance Committee, and the first item on the agenda will go to our Fire Chief, Robert. Baker. Robert, what do you have for us? Can we have a copy of my budget? So basically, the budget hasn't changed except for the line item when you get down to uh, vehicle maintenance. The vehicle maintenance department. Uh, you notice the year before last, I had $6,300, and last year I requested $7,500, and I've requested $7,500 again this year for the simple reason that we're having work done on our fire trucks, upgrading of uh, valves and stuff like that. Which was, which was actually a lot more money than we anticipated. And some of the work is being done this year, this fiscal year, and they'd like to finish up the rest of it the next, next year. Uh, we were thinking about putting electronic valves in the, on our older pumper because their valves work so hard, but we have abandoned that idea and we found out each valve was $2,500 just to purchase it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many? There were seven of them on the truck. Seven. So we abandoned that idea. We've, uh, the guy that's gonna be doing our work came up with some other creative ideas to make them work a lot easier, and we're gonna go with that. So uh, it's a lot less money. All right, so, so basically you're level funded. Basically level funded. Yes. Okay, questions from the looks finance like committee? Last year was a great year. You only spent 830 bucks. Mm -hmm. so. okay, I wouldn't, I should mention this, and I, maybe I shouldn't. But I wouldn't believe that figure. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have any clients? <laughs> no, because my bookkeeper says a lot different than that. Uh, okay, well, well where did it come from there? Yeah, it's your number. <laughs> well, it uh, the expense it, account doesn't come from me. Right. It comes from other departments. Yeah. yeah. So it could be that some things were attributed. And I have else. noticed this year, and I need to talk to Tom about it. That Such he, as his monthly sheets that the accountant sends us at the end of the month for balances. He's got some other categories that I don't even have. Yes, we are continue to work on uh, wrestling it into shape. And as 
a couple of them this past month, the ones that weren't there before. So I, he's relabeling the counts differently than I am. Yeah, that, that, that could be part of that figure. Uh, that, that, that has to do with the, the switch over of accounting software right. that they went through. And, right. And so we yeah. need to get on queue for next year with that, get, get them all lined up and get the money proportioned properly. Then those will look better. Those will make look closer to reality. Yes, and please do let them know when you find something that should be somewhere else or is allocated somewhere where you don't think it should be allocated because we did spend a lot of time getting a really nice, concise uh, set of reports from the previous system, and this system is much more unwieldy, uh, so it looks like we're going to have to do a lot of that work again, unfortunately. When does our fiscal year start and end? It starts July 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Ends June 30th. Yeah. I have a comment now, Bob. The, uh, the year to date, we're slightly uh, over budget with regard to repairs and maintenance. So as our equipment gets older, uh, do you think we might consider we over up that at this point? Yeah, a little bit. Not much. Just based on some repairs and maintenance. That's all. We have a few thousand dollars. So Your you account think, says you were over on budget? Yeah, according to the town accountant. Slightly. Because well, the last report I got, I had like year thousand dollars left in it. Yeah, year to date. So, so my question is, you think that we might consider a hog, given our equipment is now going to be a year older, might it be a good idea to bump up the uh, maintenance fee? It would be a good idea, and I'm going to tell you why. I have spent, uh, now that I've taken ownership of the old police cruiser, uh -huh. I'm having to have some maintenance work done on that, and that is okay. not even, I'm just going to try to absorb that in this year's budget somewhere. That's a 2015. That's a 13. 13. I've got to have a brake job done on it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's at the repair shop right now because it's leaking antifreeze from oh. somewhere. Don't bring it to the transfer station. No, no, no. It's, so they're, they're, uh, it's going to be repaired with that. It needs a new battery put in it and things like that. You know, yeah. to, to leave it that's one day. That is compared to a pumper yeah. truck having to have a valve uh, change. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> if you you know if you think it should bump it up, I I think I think a suggestion. I, I think it would be a good idea. It probably is. It, you know, yeah. Nothing is getting newer. Everything is getting older. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's not a lot of money in maintenance account for yeah. fire trucks. Yes, I agree. So. The figure you're looking at, Alan, are you saying halfway through is oh, yeah. yeah. well, that, that exactly is this 830 figure? Yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. But this one shows zero, right? I mean, otherwise, <coughs> you're spot on with the budget. I mean, it shows zero. Fine. For, uh, you can level fun. Right. You're not you're proposing any salary or hourly increases. Just through, through yeah. the Senate. Have you ever figured that you were thinking about that you were saying we should increase it to? Okay. No. The, the personal uh, committee hasn't recommended it, so I'll defer their lead on that. But uh, I just think repairs and maintenance should make me put, make me revisit it. I know it's awful expensive getting repairs done. Mm -hmm. Can you, I mean, do you have a, a, a maintenance schedule for, uh, I'm assuming it's all the equipment, you must, right? Right. Can you look at that maybe and uh, just make sure? I haven't got this year's. I have. They haven't done the oil changes this year yet. They're doing the the guy that when he's coming doing the valve is going to do the in-house maintenance mm -hmm. on the uh, you know, oil changes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, is that sometime over the next couple of months? Probably. So that's all under this year. That's under this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's uh, hold off for now. But okay. if you can come up with the. Um, numbers maybe for the last couple of years for maintenance on the vehicles? Well, that, that's what those figures are right in front of you. No, I mean in the, the, the detail. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah. oh, and, and, boy. and we should have the detail from the account too. You, you should be able to ask Mike for the, well, actually you should be getting the detail um, and so you can see if that's right. I don't know if it's broken down that. Yeah, it should be. It should be. You should have gotten something um, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I can send it if, if you did. Let me know about that, uh, and then and then we can look at um, you know what kinds of expenses there are. Thank you. Actually, you got, you got that too. Yeah, you got the detail. Yeah, at that. But seventy five hundred looks like it's less than the average of fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. When there is, when there is numbers. I mean, you know, you've got 82 and 60, 62 basically, and and 10-3. You know, they all add up to about 25 or so. Again, that like that year was 82. We had 63 unappropriated. Well, we had more expenses on something broke that we had to get it repaired. Sure. So, 
But so 75 pounds less. That budget line is not aligned for a lot of anything major, any, not I should, minor things that happen. That's just the curve of the line. Why is this projecting that? All right, any other questions for Bob? That's it. Otherwise, you know, very fine. Can I talk about this uh, quote for the special article I got? You want to talk about that? Um, we are going to be covering those things later. I think, you know, just a general. Uh, some general discussion is okay, but we we do have a, a different another meeting set aside in, in a in a few weeks after the uh, committee, the capital improvement planning committee, uh, comes up with their recommendation. But you know, a few words, I think. Right now, fine. okay. Uh, I'm at requesting uh, a quote to replace nine of our self-contained breathing apparatus acts during the fire trucks. Uh, NFPA recommends. Their recommendation to replace maybe 15 years. They're going to be, uh, lot, I checked the dates on them yesterday, they're 2002s, but by 20 they're going to be 18 years old. And I think we consider, should we seriously consider replacing them? The newer packs are smaller, mm -hmm. easier operation for the they got tanks, are half the size of the tanks are on the ones we've got now, uh, but they're very expensive. Nine packs. And 18 bottles, that's a spare bottle, that's a pack with a bottle, and a spare bottle. You gotta have some spares on hand. You, you, you just have to. Comes up to about 85,215 bucks. And I've got a quote, state bid quote on it, if you wanna mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know well, where I got my figures from. Um, Bob, is, is there any chance of spreading that out over more than one year? Because it, it, would, it would be good for something like that to, you know, eventually get on the schedule of doing one every year. You know, if, if it's every... I guess you years. could, but you're going to be escalating into the uh, increased cost. I don't know how much... Well, last year they were... Let's see, what they got a quote on here? Uh, or one every other year, if, there's, if they last 18 years. What's the most you need at one time? Well, the initial attack team that goes in is four. Four. Three, three uh, firefighters and, and an officer, mm -hmm. one person in charge of them. Mm -hmm. And that's the same amount we use for the RIT team when we go to the fire calls out of town where we have to be there to the rest of the firefighters if they get injured in the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to have a minimum of four for that. Mm -hmm. They prefer five, but they have to have a minimum of four. Mm -hmm. So, um, so over 9,000 a piece. So, yep, yeah, they are, they're nine, they're, the actual cost of the pack is 6200 apiece. Mm -hmm. And the uh, four and a half inch strap with a buckle, which is, I don't know why it's listed separate, it's 350 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. That's still part of the pack. Mm -hmm. uh, the amplifier so you can communicate with each other to $535 a piece. And uh, and the cylinders are eleven hundred dollars a piece. The cylinders, the older cylinders we got, we paid nine eighty for them. We bought them. Mm -hmm. The new ones are gone up to eleven hundred, so it's escalating prices are going up. So every year they get more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. One other thing I have on here is a Scott Insight Full Kit Medium, which is a it's a sixteen hundred and fifty dollar figure, and I've only put one in here, and it is a in the mask. Um, <coughs> thermal imager. It mounts right here. It's a little device it mounts here right inside the mask. And the guy gets full imprint. We, we carry a big ham album when you go into a fire call. Checks temperatures. can tell you where the hottest spots are and stuff like that. This device is much smaller, but it's built into the mask. The operator doesn't have to carry anything. Wherever he turns and looks, it's going to give him a projection on his, inside of the mask. So, so it's like night vision? Like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the night vision. It, 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 it pick up heat. The wonderful thing about it is you can go into a totally black room and if a person's laying on the, on the floor, still alive, been alive for a while and they're warm, the body's warm, it'll immediately light it right up on your screen so you can point pinpoint right where it is. Because mm -hmm. <coughs> so, we know as general knows when we go in some of the buildings sometimes and smoke you can't see that far in front of yourself, never mind down the other end of the room. I will talk about that in more detail uh, later, Bob. Great. Thank, thank, thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy, you're up. Okay. Yay.
Um, all right, well, for some goofy reason, mine wouldn't print out normally, so I've got it kind of written sideways here. Um, not a lot of changes. I mean, I went up on, like, the radio fees because we got kind of, we got nailed this past year because the county-wide fees increased for everybody, and we didn't know about it until it was <laughs> too late. Um, so I did bump that number up a little bit just in case it goes up again. Yeah. Um, okay. The radio system in the county is aging and, you know, at some point something is going to have to be done with it and it, it's going to have a trickle down effect to all of us that use the system. Right. Um, so that, I think that was pretty much the biggest increase um, on anything. Um, I went up a little bit on the software support because that program is also changing and evolving and that price is going to yeah, it went up a little bit. That is going to go up as well, um, potentially. I'm not sure by how much because I haven't gotten the exact figures from Mambi Pro yet. Um, but I wanted to allow for any changes in that. Um, any any capital items you see coming down the road aside from from the operating budget? I don't. Just, just to give us think a quick. So. Um, did we get the Lucas device that we talked about last year? We did. Yeah. It's I have it in hand. Um, it's not in service yet because we haven't done in-house training with the company with the holidays and everything that's kind of gotten screwed up. Um, but I anticipate by the end of the month we should have it in service. So it's uh, all shiny and new. Are you able to collect money? Last year you talked a lot about how hard it was to because of a state law change i think that well just in the fact that the law is if somebody has medicare we can't bill them for anything over and above what we get reimbursed which it's not really a change but those numbers keep changing as far as what we get reimbursed from medicare um and that number did go down this year or this past year and the insurance companies now pay the person that got carried and you have to get the money from them, right? The Not always. I think that depends on the insurance company. Um, I, I don't honestly know because the billing company deals with all of that. I, see, yeah. um, I know periodically they will email me or send me a letter saying, you know, they got a letter from the insurance company saying they paid the patient directly and therefore they have to do... Basically, it's just them notifying me of whatever extra steps they're taking to get the money. And usually the insurance companies they will the our billing company will bill the insurance company if the if the insurance company has paid the patient directly then they'll tell coastal who's the billing our billing company what happened and then it kind of for the most part it all comes out in the end and it all gets figured out it's just a matter of a couple extra steps sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but generally speaking for the last you know few months we've been getting I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but the the amounts that I've been getting in statements from Coastal going into the account, you know, for receipts and stuff has been decent. You know, it's not huge amounts of money, but it's it's steady, and I don't know what it what the exact amount is right now, but it seems to be. They haven't been emailing me saying we need to, you know, have stuff updated or anything yeah, like that yeah. yet. So, um, or saying that people are. You know, severe reviews or anything like that. So great. Good. Yeah. We're we're holding our own. <laughs> and, <laughs> any questions for, for yeah. Jim? You, you said Medicare before. Did you mean Medicare or Medicaid? Both, technically. It, Both. Yeah. Medicare is for elderly, Medicaid is for income, you know, low income. And basically the same rules apply to both mm -hmm. that we get the same reimbursement rate so, well, from okay. the medicaid the rate that's is this is set by the medicare yeah. rate right and, and you cannot bill the hi a higher amount like you would bill if it was an insurance like a, a private insurer correct i i'm not a hundred percent sure on the medicaid versus Medicare. I know the elderly, we can't bill, 
you know, we can't go to them for the additional balance mm -hmm. of, you know, what the the rate, the amount would be total. So I guess my question is, is it a losing proposition when you're handling Medicaid and Medicare? If, if that's all you Pretty have, yes. we'd be losing money on the ambulance. Probably in the long run, yes, because especially if we have to have an intercept with a paramedic, because that fee is a flat fee of either between two hundred and seventy-five and three hundred dollars. And it can go up. It can, and it it most likely will as everything else goes up and other you know other amounts go down. So, and last I knew, the amount that we were getting reimbursed from Medicaid or Medicare was. I think 375 so if we have to pay $300 for an intercept then you know we got $75 left towards everything else that's why staff by volunteers <laughs> any other questions so and my question to you is, is it would also be the same question to Bob and to um, Chief Kenny too is um, what what impact is the with the closing of Shelburne and the and putting that in the town of Greenfield to it to help finance their library or whatever their oh, you mean I mean that's one of the, the Shelburne Falls Fire District to read right that that, the, that you keep here that one of the town of Greenfield's ideas to fund their library and their yeah, new one of the parts of the budget it, it is to have Shelburne control close mm -hmm. and to have that taken up in a Greenfield town office mm -hmm. um, and then Greenfield bill all and that, uh, that struck me as something that yeah I, I don't I don't think that's going to happen yeah, yeah. all right well, we're, we're, not, we're, we're not part of the district anyway so. yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't so I guess that that so my question was did that have any impact on us where do these where do our fees that we're paying for radios where do they go to now and the radio the, fees go to the Frocog yeah sure. the, the, that's yeah, they're the, the ones that are managing the radio system for Franklin County. It's the, it's the Franklin County Emergency <coughs> Communication System, and there are some real problems with it. And uh, FERCOG is attempting to get um, state funding for it because it needs to be replaced. Um, and they've been working on it now for at least three years. And there, there's some, some serious problems. They're looking for both state and federal money to, uh, to make sure that the system um, can either be replaced or we can maintain the system adequately enough to make sure our emergency communications are, are working properly. Uh, and it's, it's, it's been a real battle. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that, that's, that's being... Uh, Basically, uh, they're putting a lot of band-aids on the radios and hoping that they keep working until that's, that's a grant or some kind of state funding comes through because it's a huge expense. That's a, exactly what's happening now. If it has to be replaced, it's an eight to ten million dollar um, ticket, <laughs> and uh, that would have to be uh, if the state or we don't get federal or state funding, then that expense comes from the towns. Of Franklin County, so that would be a, a huge, a huge expense. So, right now, FERCOG is doing everything it can to make sure the system is maintained properly, and um, looking for that state or federal funding to perhaps um, replace the system because it's it's old, and the towers are sometimes out of sync, and there's all kinds of problems. But uh, the fur cogs on top of it. I have one last question. Yeah. Um, how how is our billing for the ambulance handled? I mean, it's a billing service that, mm -hmm. that we use. Are we uh, convinced that they are capturing all the dollars that can be captured? Because the way this system <laughs> is, yeah. If you, if your coding isn't exact, if you, I mean, maybe there's procedure, like a medical practice, if yeah. the procedures they're doing on the, in the ambulance and it doesn't make it onto the bill, you, you don't get it. You right. And I mean, a, a big part of that is, is in our reporting of what we do, which as long as we do our reports, 
I I send a copy of our report, our run report, and to the the, the, the face <laughs> sheet from the hospital that has all of the patient's information and insurance and whatnot to the billing company. If we don't put something that's done, right. you know, on that that report, then if it's not writing, it didn't happen. So part of that is our you know on us, and we try to make sure that we document everything that we do or did. Um, as far as you know what their checks and balances are. I honestly, I don't know. I, I mean, I. Well, but you see, you, have, get, you, you get reimbursed for what you put in for. <laughs> well, it, it pays. That it, you see, the problem could be that they write it into the report, and the billing service misses it, oh. and then they, then there's a gap. Yeah, so, there's no other challenge. Right, but, well, but you would notice right. that based on the report, you well, they get a percentage well, of what they collect. So only if, yeah, you, only yeah. if you're yeah. auditing the bill, would you notice? Yeah. Right, and I, you know, I don't see what's actually yeah. sent from the you billing company it. to the insurance company. Right. The medical clearinghouse I mean, works almost like a, it's impenetrable. Forget about it. I work with medical practices and how it bills yeah. and covers. I mean, and how it they the they bill us on what they collect for us. Not so, really. I figure that's an incentive for them to make sure that they do their job right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to honesty and trust. I mean, well, I, I, I don't have a good answer for I you. I mean, if you, have someone, if you can have someone audit the uh, medical billing service to make sure they're properly coding. But I mean, it it also good. comes down to the medical practices in particular. They all have their idiosyncrasies, mm -hmm. and they wind up working with clearinghouses that mm -hmm. understand their, their idiosyncrasies or that over time they found have produced more revenue for them. Uh -huh. And I don't know that the ambulance billing is as complex, perhaps, as the, but I'll bet it's complex enough. And how many calls have you done so far this year? We, 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 we generally understand really well why people don't pay when they don't pay. Yeah. And there are some people well, that's a, who that's don't story. pay, and that's, and that's, that's a different issue. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but um, I don't think that our collections are, are very different from any other yeah, ambulance right. operation. I mean, put this way, we, there weren't so. we, we return service, so it hasn't paid. We have a can't receive service. service. Yeah. Well, no, I, I just, it would be nice to, to know that it, it, the billing was accurate. No, honestly, well, so I don't. You're not sure when you bill for this I, or this or this, you're not sure what that is? I don't know what the break, what the exact billing <laughs> breakdown <laughs> is that comes from the billing yeah. company to the Right. Well, you, you have to, you have to see the business to believe it. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I've got uh, just just one thing to bring it up a little bit out of the weeds. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, as you know, we put in some money from the operating budget for the ambulance operations every year, yeah. and we we raised that last year because the. The receipts are are variable. They're they're a little bit volatile, and and we were getting a little bit nervous that we didn't have enough in there, and thought a little bit more in the operating budget would be good, taking a little bit less from ambulance receipts yeah. reserved. And I just wanted to let people know, which I'm going to go over a little bit, um, maybe not in so much detail after you leave. So I just wanted you to hear yeah. this too. That right now I have um, uh, the ambulance uh, reserve for receipts, receipts reserved, uh, is about $52,000. And I'm proposing taking 22,000 of that out mm -hmm. for funding mm -hmm. the, um, the uh, operations. And I think it's another, uh, there's a certain amount that I'm gonna propose to, to go into uh, ambulance stabilization too. I actually don't see that on here. That still seems pretty conservative, uh, Tom. But that's, but that's what we, um, that's what we do is we, we take uh, a, a chunk of the ambulance receipts reserved that have not gone to operations and put it into the uh, ambulance stabilization for the next ambulance. So that's, um, I just wanted to sort of lay out that that's on track here. Okay, thank you, Gemma. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Did you get any questions? <laughs> nope. Well, I, I got questions, got but now I gotta go try to answer them. So. Yeah. <laughs> Other town meeting in budget business. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing police tonight? Yeah, I don't know where Ken is. The only um, I saw him on top of uh, Warren, Warren Brook and White. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um,
Uh, I did. Chase down a loose horse in the road, probably. <laughs> uh, his only his only rise was in uh, software support. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure what that's for, but. Because um, it looks like they spent most of the money. Yeah, he's, he's basically level funded. Yeah, he's level yeah. funded. Yeah. Today, it looks like he spent most of it already. Oh. Yeah, and uh, and they have some proprietary software, as do many of our town departments. He's fifty-one point six. You mean you think he'll go over, Tom? Really? Well, he's fifty-one point eight. He's pretty much level funded. He boosted it. Yeah. Oh. oh. He, so software. Yeah, of the just the software. software. boosted it, and the Good. year to date, he's almost, you know, they've almost to where he budgeted for yeah. this year. Well, sometimes those things are paid up front in yeah. a lump sum. I'm just saying, I assume so, that that's why the increase. Yeah. <clears throat> that's yeah, the, and it's a new database, probably, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Could now, be are the there any, are it there could be the CGIS, um, the, the Criminal Justice Information System yeah. Network. Uh, connection fee, it could be. Uh, are there any, uh, so this, does it include any increase in salaries or only wages that are going to be imposed? Uh, we're, not, we're not doing any of that yet. Okay. That'll depend on okay. what you all think of, the, of okay. our incredibly strong town finances after yeah. we go through the whole process. Free, free so cash, right. I'm anticipating uh, good news. Uh, which is where I would like to turn now. Well, can I just ask a question about the police budget, though? The, there, there was an issue, um, not an issue, um, but going through um, previous uh, town budget documents, there was a, an, empo an employee benefit buyback regarding this department. Yeah, that um, was one time. That was a one time. Was it? Yeah, yeah. he was cash. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done with that. Yeah. Yeah. Done. We're okay. not going to see that again. Yeah. That answers my question. Good. Okay, Tom. Um, <laughs> um, we have uh, three documents here for you right now. Um, this is a preview of, of the budget that I'm developing. Uh, all of its draft, except the free cash chart. Um, so you can see, we got a lot more free cash this year. A lot of that um, was due to selling properties. Um, I have a much a much uh, more in-depth description of that. If you uh, are interested, I'll just um, I can uh, let's see if it's worth uh, finding it right now. You talked about tax so. tax taking. That kind um, of? The, the reason why we got so much free cash. Um, a, a, a good chunk of it is is one time stuff that we're not going to get again. We we sold some properties. Um, uh, we had, um, uh, for some reason, $26,000 extra in motor vehicle excises, uh, $9,000 extra in fees, $4,000 extra in investment income. There was the one-time uh, amount of $67,000 from closing out old special revenue funds, which included all the money we voted for the pipeline, but never used. So that's coming back to us now. Mm -hmm. Well, we won't see that again. That's a one-time increase. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just $15,000 from free cash from last year rolled in. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the reasons that we had a what lot of properties. Uh, What's these properties you're talking about? How much? I don't know which ones in particular Jan, Jan keeps a list of those. Oh, okay. but, uh, you mean you, when you say properties, you're talking real estate? Yeah, if if the town I mean, takes something for tax title, the excise tax and the sixty-seven thousand one time, and the fifteen, and then it was dropped. Yeah, it, what's the, the total then? Uh, Four hundred and thirty-eight, I think, hmm. something like that. Hmm. Um, which is you know more than I would even aim for. Uh, so I, I don't expect that we'll see that again. We will see some extra money next year from the, uh, from the Comcast uh, build out because we tax utilities on their personal property. That's Comcast's personal property and we tax it. So now that there's more of it, we're gonna tax more. When will Lee know the figures? She had mentioned the email to me about a month ago that she's still waiting. You think it'll be between now and time we vote on the final budget that she'll find out with the Comcast? No. All right. Um, well, 
Yeah, we, we're going to tax them more, yeah. but we're going to have to pay their fee. Where, the, where that'll go is on the revenue side of the budget. Yeah. And what it'll show, it'll either have us have more excess levy capacity, yeah. you know, it'll have us have, you know, some degree more of excess levy capacity. That, that, that's the only, that's the only way it, it plays out. Mm -hmm. um, that's off topic. So there's a couple of uh, paired charts here. The, um, the projected special articles uh, for money uh, one is by department and item, and the other is by the source of funds. So happily, they both add to the same figure. <laughs> Always challenging that. Um, so these are right now the um, the articles having to do with money that have come in, and and these are these are all of them. the The one that is missing uh, that I just mentioned is money to go to ambulance stabilization from ambulance receipts reserved. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a, uh, it's a non-tax item. Mm -hmm. It's shifting money from one that's account to another account. account. we've done for years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, so we, uh, <clears throat> we usually put some into a stabilization. We did not have enough money to do that last time, which is one of the reasons, the main reason that we raised the, uh, the operating budget. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, I've assigned just two items to get money from capital stabilization. The, the truck, the second item under uh, uh, highway, they're getting a big truck, six-wheel truck, or they're, they're asking for one. Mm -hmm. And uh, then also uh, the fire equipment that we just heard from Bob, if we funded that completely. So you just said it's nine units, not ten. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I like your idea too, though, of maybe oh, wow. four now, four now, and one per year, or whatever that your idea was. I'll correct that. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, I, I I could add the the ambulance item here. It wouldn't make any difference in. Uh, you know, it's kind of a wash. It comes out of one special fund and goes into, into another special fund. So. Um, so then, turning to the last page, this is my overall spreadsheet for the whole town meeting. Uh, and what I've done, I have figures for everything except the FERCOG, which is uh, 830 under the um, Article 2 column. It's line item 830. And I don't have any of the school money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, in the, uh, in, it's red in the charts. You can't really see that it's red here. Um, but what I've done is I've just multiplied it by 4% just to give some kind of a ballpark figure as to where we might be. And if we uh, went up 4% in all of those budgets, we would end up um, with a budget that was $177,000, $178,000, or about 3% over last year's budget. If you look over um, on the bottom right, the town subtotal rises only a total of $22,000. The school subtotal rises about $140,000, uh, which is kind of typical. Yeah. Uh, so that's where that extra... Um, Mm -hmm. and that's the breakdown of town and school for that extra money. All in all, uh, just an extraordinary, yeah. extraordinarily strong yeah. financial uh, situation. Mm -hmm. now, the school increase doesn't take into account any, any negotiated contracts that are ongoing, right? Yeah. There will be a placeholder number put in the budget starting next month for, for, before the public hearing. And uh, uh, just, just one other thing to point out. For, uh, for the money articles, none of them are assigned to raise and appropriate. So the only raise and appropriate items are Article 2, the operating budget for the town, which, again, um, thank you, free cash. Thank you, uh, pipeline that didn't come. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we're, in a, we're in a great position. This also allows us to move... Um, somewhat under a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars 
uh, of free cash money into next year. And the, the longer we can push some of that money out, the more of a cushion we'll have as the new growth from the Comcast buyout and these one-time you know, bonanzas from cashing out earlier articles uh, recede. We'll, we'll be able to smooth out the increases with uh, with that free cash if we're able to roll it over till the following year. It's a sign of good fiscal health if a town can roll over a certain amount of free cash to next year. Let, uh, let last year to this year, we only rolled over fifteen thousand dollars. I'm hoping it's closer to eighty or ninety thousand uh, dollars this year. So you mean the Comcast build out? Yes. yes. I don't think we're buying out yeah, Comcast. Yeah, we're not so what, what did you come up with twenty grand for OPEP? We've been doing ten thousand. Yeah. And what I think, what I'd like to try to do is make an argument to uh, whoever's rating our town for a credit agency uh, the next time we do any borrowing. I'd like to make the argument that OPEP is only it's under half a percent of our operating budget for Conway, which is really, really low. There are some places, like Worcester, that are in a very bad, dangerous situation. Springfield, Holyo, Boston. Due to... Uh, all, all of them. All of them. Yeah. 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 Um, Everybody. Because they're all in small so towns. Not in good shape. So, but that, that's my argument about OPEP, that, that the, the system as it exists cannot well, function. Right. And... and, and that, if I can just continue yeah, answering your okay, question, yeah. and then you can well, say what's on all of my minds. I'm trying to narrow my question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the argument that I want to make is I, I'd like to get um, at least two years worth of our um, OPEB obligation mm -hmm. into the fund, and then pay our OPEB out of that fund going forward. So that we can say to the ratings agencies, yeah. for five years, we've yeah. been paying our OPEB out of our OPEB operating fund. Out of the amount of the audience. And, and try to make that an argument for them saying that we're a better financial steward. Because otherwise, you know, we've got a million and a half in OPEB obligation, and it's ridiculous to lock up that amount of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and as you say, it's, it's not sustainable in the long run anyway. We should always be looking for healthcare cost containment arguments and issues and supporting those as well. There's a limited amount we can do on the local well, yeah. level about that. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, so I'll let you but, take it from there. But I mean, I, I've, seen, I've seen scenarios of what it will take to get OPEB it to where it needs to be, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. billions. Well, and, yeah, the, 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 o, the OPEB obligation is based on worst case situation. Yeah, it's totally worst case situation. And that's why yeah. those numbers look so high. Our auditors have audited our OPEB for uh, fiscal year 18, so it's available. So how much OPEB is in the, do we have currently? We've only got about, uh, it's either twenty or $30,000 in the so yeah. account now. And we're still paying. So we're not, take, we're not withdrawing from there. Right. We're paying as, as we go along. Yeah. This year, this next right. year, next year. And, and what I'd like to see is $100,000 in that fund yeah. so that we can pay it every year and be able to pay it two years in a row and say right. to whoever's doing our rating, you know, we've been paying out of our OPEB fund yeah. for this many years. Yeah. And, well, then, right. and, and right. that, I don't know if that'll make a difference or not, but it's about the only strategy I can think of yeah. for a small town that yeah. really doesn't want to sock a so, million and a half away into yeah. an account that we'll never use. So, so what was last year's? Uh, we put in 10,000 10, last, no, year. last year's obligation. Oh. About a, Oh, fifty yeah. some thousand dollars. It gets calculated every two years. It's part of a so, so it's, I'm not talking about. Or it, may, it, may, it may even be less than that. It may be. I'm it may be like twenty five. I think about retiree benefits. What do we pay? Yeah. You know how? So what was that about? Yeah. I think it was twenty five. Okay, so it's yeah. it's in. I, I had thought it was fifty. So that sounds like a lovely idea. Yeah. So we're getting yeah. up towards fifty, which would be close to two years, and maybe I'd like to see. You know, I originally was thinking we paid 50 and we had like 100 in there, but Jan corrected me. Yeah. Uh, excuse me for not remembering that right away. Yeah. Our actual OPEB, as opposed to the other things that are in that, um, in that account, are uh, yeah. so two years. Five years. And who do you have to convince? Is that the rating agency? Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, Scanlon, well, is Scanlon still our auditor? Yeah. Is Scanlon yeah. still our auditor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
In fact, we're paying okay for a small so, town to begin with. Your number two year cost would be near 50000 mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the thought would be yeah. that we'd have lower borrowing costs if we'd go pay for a rating and float a barn to uh, borrow money, right? I'm sorry? It would, it would lower our borrowing costs. That's the thought. Well, of it's an argument to make that I think a small town can make yeah. that they might look and say, oh, yeah. so you do know what your situation is. You're, you're paying attention to it. You're not in any danger. Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, the the, the OPEB account is one of the first things the rating agencies look at yes. to to judge your financial sure. health. Number one uh, is revenues because most towns are like zero in yeah. their OPEB oh, yeah, account, yeah, 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 yeah. and that's that's no good. And and I and that's why for for OPEB the the OPEB for big cities for the Holyoke the Springfield the Worcester. Yeah. OPEB is a state liability for all yeah. intents and purposes, yeah. and it will be. It, it has to be. There's no other. Yeah. And th yeah. those towns like us that are being responsible are going to get punished for that. We're we're not going to have state bailout. Whereas the ones that don't pay this are going to get a state bill yeah. bailout. Mm -hmm. And and I wonder whether the lack of a well, state bailout in the future compensates for the, the for in, lower credit rate. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. you know where where that comes out at, but higher credit rate. If there's a state bailout, it will also, you know, that'll be when the when a municipality goes into state receivership, yeah. and and that is a very steep price to pay, and that means austerity all around. Yeah. And we certainly don't want to be in that situation. On the other hand, we're never going to have a problem with OPEP. Yeah. Uh, but but we do need to show that we're doing something about it and yeah. thinking about it. And I think this will help. This will help us make the argument that not only are we thinking about it, we're thinking about it creatively and responsibly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very good. On the revenue side, I'm told that there's seven new housing starts in Conway scheduled over the next year. Is that what? Really? Right. Yeah, I think so. Seven. And uh, is there any idea of what the uh, estimated value tax base that might be right now? Well, I, you look at the average average cost of a house today, right? It's 300,000, 300,000, so it's probably seven, somewhere two million. around 2 million. So you're talking another 39,000 revenue can potentially generate in fiscal year like 21, right? All right. Sure. Yeah. Um, for, 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 uh, for Conway, and especially with its zoning, uh, new growth through residential construction right. is not a big money maker Never. over a period of time. We're, we're going to reach build out, you know, yeah. at some point. And, and it, we've been simulating it over the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think that's the highest number of housing starts in this town in any period of time, in at least a decade, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it, that, that's not a forever strategy. It's not a sustainable strategy to do that unless you know, we change the zoning and let subdivisions in, and I don't think anybody yeah. wants to do that here. No, let more rich people build a million dollar home to, with no kids that go to public school. That, that's what we want. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's exactly what we want. I, I have a question. Uh, I, I missed last week's hearing. Did we discuss bridges as part of the highway last week? No. <laughs> the, well, yeah, no. It, yeah, yeah. You mentioned that the the, the Poland Road that. Bridge is on the state schedule on the for twenty twenty three. To be yeah. funded, we will not have to pay for it. The state will pay for that it. That we voted to pay for we'll it last pay for year town meeting. The state's going to pay for that in twenty twenty three. We pay um, for it. Not, we that that is a, that is what we are being told, and I would characterize it as a fear. Maybe okay. We have like ten bridges. It's a maybe. Ten bridges? We're talking. No, well, we're, well, that was one. That was number one on the hit parade. Yeah, so, uh, no, we have one that needs to be repaired now. So that repair was never done. It's well, going to be done. No, it hasn't been because it's on the list to be done by the state in 2023. Okay, so At we, the moment, there's no correct. money allocated for it. Ron is optimistic the bridge can last that long. Okay. Yeah. The wooden critting will hold. <laughs> yeah. He said he made the bus drive over that bridge. Didn't I it? said I'd spring for a canoe to prove it to help go <laughs> if it fails. I want to start a fair Any other questions for the dinner table? For Tom. None. Again, okay. preliminary figures. Yeah. Thank yeah. <laughs> you. Thank you. For excuse for coming. Good. Thank you. Uh, do we have any announcements? Any announcements? No announcements. Thank you all. Um, next meeting is Tuesday the 22nd because Monday is a holiday morning that's here in the town hall at 6 o'clock.
Um, if there's no other business coming before the board, I will make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Uh, I will say the 22nd. I'm not going to be able to make it. Yeah, what? You can't make it here? No. Okay. Thank you.